Hey yo, how's it going, motherfuckers? <laughs> That's my Joe Rogan impression. Hey, so as you might expect, episode 90 with Jason Horsley elicited some strong reactions from some folks in the occult and paranormal community. So I invited a couple folks who heard the show and had some opinions on it to chat with me for a bonus raw Patreon show. And those folks were Ren Collier, who blogs at liminalroom.com, and Jerry Cthulhu, who is the co-host of the Nox Mente podcast. Don't think that's his real name. Anyway, we covered a lot of ground in about 80 minutes talking magic, consciousness, paranormal experiences, psychological fragmentation, and a whole lot more. And this be a clip from that chat. If you enjoy it, you can hear the rest of it, plus all previous and forthcoming Raw episodes by signing up at the $5 level at patreon.com slash occulture. So please do. Enjoy. I guess what I'm trying to get at is these experiences and these states that human beings can encounter exist independently of the of religion, of intelligence agencies. Like, religion didn't create that experience. That experience exists outside of that. Right now, what religion and what these agencies doing social control and things do is they tell you how to interpret that experience, right? They tell you, well, that's because, you know, you need to figure out how to die correctly or else a dragon's going to eat you in the afterlife, or you need to escape the cycle of death and rebirth. They tell you what to believe, right? And that makes it even more important, in my opinion, to engage with the experiences and figure out for yourself what the experience is about, right? Instead of relying on some authority figure to tell you what the experience is about. And that's what I feel like people like, um, like Robert Monroe did um, in, you know, his, his books. He had no preconceived notions about the experiences he was having because he had no frame of reference to examine them, right? So he came up with his own ideas about what the experience was, what his purpose on earth was, like what the whole point of the out-of-body state was. But you shouldn't believe him either, you should do the work and figure it out for yourself, right? That's the problem. And, you know, on some level, I, I sympathize with Jason's point here because people often look to an authority figure to tell them what to think, right? You look towards people like Crowley to tell you what magic is. You look towards Buddhism to tell you how to die, right? And I, I understand that desire because these experiences can be very confusing and strange and a lot of times you feel like you need somebody to just tell you, Hey, here's what the fuck's happening to you. Right. But people have to be brave and engage it on their own terms with an open mind and figure out for themselves what the answers are. Jerry, do you have any thoughts on that? Which part? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's sort of long winded there. Sorry. On the original question about the separation, I, I, I don't think the astral travel experience is necessarily leaving your body just like a lucid dream is not leaving your body. Well, how do we know it's not? I mean, it could be right. We don't know. And I, I just tend to think yeah. it's internal. That's all. I mean, I, I can't say that it isn't right. And mm -hmm. that's a big point that uh, Dean Radin makes about near death experiences and these sort of experiences in his latest book is that there's no objective way to tell. Right. Like scientifically, you can't determine one way or the other whether something is uh, objective or subjective experience. Right. And that doesn't um, in any way invalidate the experience. No, it doesn't. Yeah. I mean, I tend to fall on the other side of belief. And I, I think that out of body experiences are a legitimately objective experience that you are traveling uh, non locally. And I think that there is vertical evidence to back that up by people like Graham Nichols and, and other authors who've explored the state and, and people like Robert Monroe, Whitley Strieber. Um, I don't, I don't think that it is something that is entirely in your head. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you send out some sort of energy that can be measured by scientific instruments, right? Like, I don't know. It, it may operate on some level that we have no access to in the physical world. There isn't, there isn't enough research on it to determine what the nature of the experience is. That's, and that's another reason I disagree with Jason and think that these type of things should be researched, right? Because I think they have vast implications for human cognition, consciousness, and our future as a species.